on, come on, come on, come on. Put them together for the Lord. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Before I call the guest speaker tonight, please, um, I was told that there were people that raised their hands for seatings around them. They said that there's so many people outside and we don't want empty seats that will just stay vacant. Now, um, are you guys ready to bring them in? I need to do that in two minutes. Please hurry up. Can we get them in quickly, quickly, quickly? Dickie Francis, can we get the people in? There are seats that are vacant. They're raising their hands. Can we just go quickly? Anywhere you see people raising their hand, go, go to them straight. Quickly, get them in, get them in. Quickly, 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 quickly. There's quite a few hands. You know what? I want to beg you, all of you that are raising your hands, everybody in the aisle, can you just go closer to them? And leave the seats on the aisle open, please. So that we don't take time to feed the people in. Just move in, move in, move in. Amen. Move in, quickly. All right, they're going to get them from the queue. Oh my God, jeez. All right, praise God. Uh, we'll have to go on with our activity tonight. Amen. All right, at this point, I would love to celebrate all the fivefold ministry gifts. That are here, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Please, can we all rise if you are in the fivefold ministry, serving the Lord as a gift to the body of Christ? Church of God, is that the best celebration you can give to these men and women of God? Can we celebrate them? We honor you, we celebrate you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. We appreciate you and we celebrate you. May the Lord bless you. We believe that you've come to this camp meeting and you are going to take something home with you. By the time you get home, your ministry will be a thousand times greater. Oh, your amen, your amen, your amen. I said your ministry will be a thousand times greater. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. Have uh, my dear friend, Pastor Ike Wanze, that ministered to us on the, I think it was on the first, second day morning. Let's celebrate him. Reverend Ike Wanze, come on, come on. Celebrate him. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop Levi Sienza is in the house. Come on, let's celebrate him. Dear Bishop, we honor you. We appreciate you. You know, the day I paid my lobola, what did we do again? Traditional wedding. It was the one that blessed us on that day. Now, Bishop is 72. When I met Bishop almost 20 years ago, he was like this. So, I don't know what you are eating. You refuse to grow old. Amen. We celebrate you, sir. Mrs. K is in the house. Amen. Amen. And our dear judge of the high court is here, Judge Lula, 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 Lula what? Lulega. God bless you, man. Let's celebrate Pastor Kins, uh, Kinsley Opeola, Apostle Howard Hans. I'm angry with him because he only came for the first time today. And his dear wife, God bless you. Sister Yelena, my dear prophetess, God bless you. And Professor Alfred, we celebrate you, sir. Pastor Charlie, God bless you. My dear brother, Sifiso Ngobo. Pastor Sifiso is in the house. I cherish this man. I appreciate you. This man is a blessing. It's a blessing. I, I don't want to tell you how much blessing he is to this house. We love you, sir. Amen. Praise God. Mr. and Mrs. Mlengana. Please, let's celebrate Brother Mike and Dr. Patience. Amen. The speaker of the city of Johannesburg is in the house. Let's celebrate Colin. Amen. We have an elder here that I honor, Dr. Mboweni and his dear wife. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. 
Now my spiritual father and mother are in the house. Apostle Aslan Madubuko, can we rise up and celebrate and appreciate the man whose grace I carry bodily? Come on, is that the best you can? Ah, just celebrate God for his life. Hallelujah. Daddy and mommy, we honor you. We yes, celebrate sir. you. And I, I always say that um, everything I am, I, I, I'm just a duplicate of him. Amen. Uh, so when you see him, you know how I will be when I'm close to 70. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. This morning, he bulldozed this place again. Hey, I don't know. Daddy, man. Uh, yeah. Every time he stands to minister, the kind of, hey, daddy, uh -uh. God gave you something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just never get tired of listening to you. It's amazing. It's ama you are fresh every time. No matter how tired he is. Sometimes I look at him and I tell myself, but now, <laughs> if, that, if he's not tired, why should I be? Amen, somebody. Mm -mm. We love you, sir. We love you, man. You are a great blessing to the body of Christ. We know that, you know, there's so many battles that you fight for us that we don't even know. You know, I remember that I was going through something and I gave him a call. And he said, son, let's pray. And he prayed. My body was on fire for three days. I didn't know how to get out of that. It was a serious attack on my life. And he spoke some words. And my everything just came. That's authority. There was a time that I preached a message on homosexuals. And uh, it had to do with, you know, the gay and all the... I preached a message. And next thing we got a memo that they come in to close our church. And I called him. He just spoke, uh, he spoke in tongues after and he said, I release confusion in their midst. That was the end of that challenge. <laughs> uh, boy, you need to have a father. Some of you fatherless sons of God. The Lord help you. I don't know how you are going around. Amen. You need to have a father. Paul wrote to Timothy, he called him my son. He wrote to Titus, he called him my son. He called Onesimus his son. He called Philemon his son. Paul was never married and never had a child. But yet they were his sons. And the arrogancy of this generation is what has made so many of us never go far. It is, it is a dangerous thing to be in authority and not under authority. See, it's a dangerous thing. You don't have somebody that can tell you, shut up, keep quiet, stop there you become a, 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 a danger to your own self. Accountability is very important in this kingdom. Are we together, church? Very critical. All right, I'm just doing all this drama so that the people that need to sit down can... <laughs> ah, Jesus. I have the mic, unfortunately for you. Amen. I have the mic. All right, are they seated? Is everybody sorted? All right. Okay. Praise God. Are you ready for tonight? You know, that answer is so lame. I feel like closing the service. Okay. Quiet. 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 Um, you know, let me just, before, as I'm doing what I'm about to do, summon up energy, so I will ask that question again. Can we appreciate my beautiful wife? Amen. Let's celebrate Mama Bulele. Amen. You know, Two years ago, we lost our spiritual mother in this house. 
We went to be with the Lord. And um, it was the most dreadful year of my life. I remember many times in the night I wept, wept for hours. Every time I looked at the side of the bed that she slept, I would cry for the whole year. This was happening. I was in pain. And I was preaching. I was encouraging people. But I was in pain. I just can't explain that pain. I said, how did I get here? For a whole year. I remember there were times when my children knocked on my door. And I was crying. And I would run to the bathroom so that they don't open the door and see me crying. You know? And I went through that year. But you know, I like the way Apostle Joshua puts it. He said there is a system in this kingdom called restoration. That I will restore the years. That the canker worm, the locust, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has eaten away from you. And so God restored me. But he restored me with a precious daughter of his. I tell you. This woman is a great. She came into this house. And everything turned around. Every. I'm not even talking just one thing. Everything. Every. My leaders can attest to this. Everything turned around. You know, and I just thank God for you, love. You are a special blessing to this house. One more time, celebrate my beautiful wife. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask again. Are you ready for the word of God? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds like it. Can we all stand on our feet? Let's stand tonight. All right. God has prepared his servant. A vessel of note. A vessel of honor. I met him uh, four years ago for the first time. And even before we met, I remember one of the days, um, the first phone call that we had. It was conversation. I was standing by the door of the auditorium. And we spoke to each other. It was as if we've known each other for years. And then when we now met, we so connected like a David and Jonathan. I'm telling you, you know, honestly, I honor the grace of God upon his life. We are, we are good friends. We talk. We have each other's back. You know, one day, I said this last year. One day he called me, he says, listen, I've reached a place with you that even if they tell me you drank all the alcohol in Johannesburg and you did something wrong, it matters nothing. You are a covenant friend. Yeah. And you know, such people are hard to find. You don't find such friends anymore. There are friends that drop you immediately they hear that something went wrong. If you have one that has your back, keep them. And so I decided that I will keep this relationship. I still remember the first time he came to House of Treasures uh, in 2020. It was just a week or two before lockdown. My late wife was sitting beside me while he was preaching. And she looked at me and said, make this man your friend. It was a warning before she went to be with the Lord. Amen. And I took up that responsibility. And today, you know, I thank God for his life. Great man. Good man. I'm telling you. I, it's not just to praise a man. You know, I, I have had series of conversations. One day, we, we, there was some time ago we spoke. I don't know what we were talking about. We finished talking. And I as we ended the call, I said, Father, help me to be humble. Because his humility humbled me. Are we together? I prayed that prayer. And I've shared it openly. I said, Father, help this boy to be humble. Are we together, church? Great man. God has loved this man that he has placed a unique grace upon his life. 
a unique grace. Unique grace. You know, and it's amazing that with this level of grace that God has put on his life, he's still very, you know, we, we went out for lunch while we were eating. When we finished, as we were coming, my wife says, you know, Apostle Joshua is so human when you sit with him. Like, you, because, you know, the way he is on the pulpit, you think when you sit with him, his spirit. <laughs> you just think, you just think that when you're around him, you know, you, you have to. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was so humorous. I mean, he shared a joke with us. We all laughed. My wife was so shocked. Like, my wife, like, are you serious? <laughs> what good man. Also, we love you, man. We love you. South Africa loves you. Amen. We love you. And, you know, this is how I always do. I do mine from the pulpit. He will be back here 2024 September. Amen. Amen. All right. I don't know what we're going to do then. We have increased this building. I'm tired of increasing. So I don't know what else. But God will give me what else. Amen. All right. South Africa. House of Treasures Ministries. Ownership 2023. And the rest of the world, help me welcome the ministry gift of Apostle Joshua Selman. Come on. Celebrate him. Celebrate the man of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your life will never be the same tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Apostle Felix, and your dear wife. And I salute our father and our mother and every man and woman of God here represented. Tonight is an extraordinary night. And hallelujah. I'm trusting God that we'll go straight to the business of tonight. Um... While standing, I just want to, I, I asked Colin to do something for me. It's an assignment. And one of the things that God does when seasons open is that he brings prophetic songs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Songs of power, songs of the spirit. And yesterday we had time to just soak in one of such songs as God spoke to us. And so I want to take about five minutes from my own time. And if you would just give me that room, I would step back. And I asked Colin to sing for us a song that came in my place of prayer, my place of worship. This was a very deep encounter I had with the Holy Spirit. And then I began to hear this song in my spirit and I, and when god brings songs like this i told you that songs are ladders in the spirit they help our ascendance in the spirit so whilst you listen i'd like you to connect with your heart and i'll be up here just after a few minutes and then we'll just take it i hope that we'll have the time i'll just share just one more component from our series and then we'll have the time to pray and speak over people tonight. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Yeah. Come on. How many of us want the Lord to breathe upon your life? Come on, lift up those hands and say, Breathe on me, God. Would you breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Everybody, come on. Breathe, Lord, lift it up. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Yeah. Breathe, Lord, breathe. As 
ask him tonight. Upon my life. Come on. Sing breathe the Lord. Breathe. Breathe. Upon my life. Say it again. Sing breathe the Lord.
Come on. Oh, I'm money. Your power, your wisdom, to the name. See Jesus lifted up, exalted. Come on, exalted. Say it again. I receive. This is a personal thing. Come on, make it your prayer. Your power and your wisdom to the nations. Woo. See Jesus. Hey, Lord. Glory, Father. Hey. Sing, breathe, Lord, breathe. Every nation, lift it up. Come on. Say, breathe. Yeah. Lift those hands and receive from him. Sing, breathe, Lord. Oh, I'm a chef de kete. I am a danasia. Lift it up. Sing, breathe. We need the breath of the Almighty. Yeah. We need the breath of the Almighty. Woo. We need your breath, Lord. We need your glory. Yeah. Breathe. Breathe. Pour out your glory. Yeah. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, Jesus. Holy Spirit. prayer. Breathe upon my life tonight. Breathe upon my ministry. Breathe upon my destiny. Someone pray. South Africa pray. Breathe O God. Breathe O God. Breathe O God. Halide bara sovrande beleke baria taba. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Till the nations sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, say hallelujah, 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 say Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Ezekiel 37 says that Ezekiel was taken in a valley that was full of bones and those bones were very dry and he said son of man can these bones live again he said only thou knowest and he said prophesy speak to these bones then the bones now had flesh but there was no life 
and then it says prophesy to the four winds and say oh wind breathe upon this slave yes, and the bible says there arose an exceeding great army may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you amazing amazing let's give colin and his team a big big god bless you hallelujah commissioned with power tonight is an impartation service and just for a quick recap we began our discussion yesterday how that the church has been ordained by god to be a church with wisdom with power and with grace that the church was ordained by god to be the clearest most visible manifestation of his power his grace his glory in the earth and we said that the end of the believers journey with god is glory that every time god begins his walk with any believer regardless what you face on the way the end of that journey is that your life becomes an effulgence of his glory his power his wisdom hallelujah but we did say that the church in its current state is not a a reflection of god's expectation as at yet in as much as god has ordained for us to enjoy a life of glory and grace that the current state of the church is not yet the standard and the expectation that God has for us. And we identified three reasons for this, um, this disappointed state, if I use that word. Number one, I said the absence of a thorough revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Number two, we said the second reason why the church has been incapacitated grossly so is because there is a bankruptcy of the revelation of our corporate mandate, our purpose, our assignment, and our mandate. And number three, that the church is largely unaware by revelation of the vast resources and the extent of power that has been invested by God. And so we took the first part yesterday night. And for those of you who did not make it this morning, please do well to get the teachings so that you will understand the mandate that the church as a universal body of Christ, we have a corporate mandate. It's captured in what theologians will call the Great Commission. And we said that it is a threefold mandate. Number one, world evangelization the first mandate that was given to all believers. Second, discipleship, the maturity of the saints. And then third, territorial or societal transformation. That if your understanding of the Great Commission does not capture these three dimensions, it is incomplete. World evangelization, discipleship, and then territorial transformation. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Let's read together. If you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This is Paul teaching the church in Ephesus. And then he tells them that God through Christ hath blessed us, his church, with all spiritual blessings. So every believer in Christ has access to all spiritual blessings. Well, the Bible tells us that these blessings are not earthbound. They reside in heavenly places and then in Christ. Verse 19, Paul is still speaking. Ephesians 1. And so he's praying over the church in Ephesus and he prayed 
certain prayers that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It then says, the heart of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. And then when we get to verse 19, among the many things that he desires for us to know is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That means the highest dimension of God God's power ever displayed in the world of men was the power that was exerted when Jesus rose up from the dead. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. That in order of strength, nothing compares to the power that was exerted that brought Jesus from Hades back to the earth. That if we understand that power, it can lift any man from anywhere to the position of glory. The power that took the son of the living God from a realm beyond the earth and brought him back to the earth. Paul is saying that among the many things that he sought for the church to understand was the extent of that power. I hope you know that the power did not just bring Jesus to the earth, but it elevated him until he was seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The church that God has ordained is a church of power. I wrote something here that I want you to listen very carefully. When God calls a people, the first thing he does is to reveal himself to them. The second thing he does is to give you a mandate on the strength of that revelation. And then the third and final thing he does is to empower you with the requisite dimension of grace to carry out that mandate. So when he calls you, he does not call you for an assignment. He calls you to know him. But that as you explore God from that encounter, a mandate will come out. The mandate is not the basis for the encounter. The mandate is to know him. That is why even when the mandate ends, your pursuit remains. Because before the mandate came, in the beginning, God not in the beginning an assignment in the beginning god before ministry before business so when ministry goes god still remains are you getting this now it's a simple principle but you need to understand this god never calls people to ministry now follow me not follow it follow me and i will make you hallelujah the Bible says he called his disciples to be with him and then that he might send them. So just because you are called does not mean you are sent. You see, when God calls you, he calls you to himself. But out of that revelation, because God is like a house with many rooms, as you explore the vastness of God, out of that encounter, to prove that you really encountered God, you must come out with a mandate. The dimension of God you see becomes your message to the nations. Hallelujah. But then he does not just send you with that message. Like he told the apostles, tarry ye in Jerusalem until I have given you a mandate, I have given you a message. But you need empowerment to carry out that mandate. Many people understand their message. But the truth is that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is largely not empowered enough to demonstrate the things that we claim we know about God. The things that we claim God has said. And because of our inability to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit to our world, like I said in the morning, we have sold a Jesus that the nations are rejecting. Because when the apostle taught, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, it is not just the message, the power of God unto salvation. Are we learning now? 
very important acts chapter 4 and verse 33 i want us to read it together as loud as you can acts chapter 4 may this be your testimony after this conference let's read together one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all upon how many upon how many upon preachers upon apostles upon them hallelujah upon them all great grace was upon them all Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 Peter was speaking to the Gentiles this would be the salvation of the Gentiles and then he made a profound statement having been a disciple of Jesus himself mentored directly by the Savior here's what he had to say how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and on the strength of that power he went about it takes more than compassion to do good it takes power and then healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him how God anointed Jesus isn't it amazing that Jesus as the word incarnate had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power you will think because of the word Jesus being the word he will not need to be anointed he would have been surprised in ministry if he were not anointed hallelujah now there are many people who are trying to produce results in the kingdom and they have ignored genuine spiritual empowerment to their detriment and I hope you understand that when I talk about being empowered is more than falling down and standing up we are talking of the capacity to produce God's dimension of results even though you are a man the ability to shift the climate of nations hmm. Joshua looks at the sun and says stand still I don't know what you call that but that is power ladies and gentlemen that is power Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and preach Christ unto them. And the Bible says the people gave heed with one accord to the things that Philip said. Hearing and seeing. This is what caught their attention. It was not just the message. Listening to the message was a latter part. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. What were the miracles? Next verse. For unclean spirits any spirit that was not of the Christ crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed I like the next verse and there was joy all over South Africa there was joy the power of God is directly connected to this kind and this dimension of joy ladies and gentlemen please hear me the purpose of our meeting tonight is not just to get you excited. I came with a hunger and a desperation in my heart that someone perhaps will be hungry enough to receive something genuine tonight. Genuine grace. Genuine power. Preachers, it takes power beyond eloquence to communicate the gospel and let the nations experience that transforming power. That's why I ask these dear people to sing that song. I receive and then I manifest your power and your wisdom. And I insist on it until the nations not see Joshua Selman until they see Jesus. Exalted. Hallelujah. So Jesus shows up. And news is spreading around town. Who is this man that just appeared from nowhere? The blind see, the deaf hear, cripples walk. He walks into a house and he sees a woman. And 
you know, one of the persons is having a fever and he casually holds the person, rebukes the fever and says, please come and serve food for us. Can you imagine that? They looked at him, he calmed the storm. Shalom, be still. And the Bible says the storm and the waves, just like that. And the disciples said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds, the seas obey him. The generation that will bring glory to Jesus will be a generation that understands power. The generation that will bring glory to Jesus must be a generation that understands power. Salvation was birthed in the place of power. If Jesus did not resurrect, our preaching is useless. It took power to bring the son of the living God from Hades, the place of the dead. And that power was so exalted, he was not the one who came out alone. The Bible says the departed saints, he lined them up and brought them out graves open when he resurrected. And that these saints walked around the streets of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. We have reduced the power of God to falling down and standing up. And no matter what I say and no matter what I do, once someone shouts or falls down, that becomes an accreditation that there is power there. Not to downplay it, but ladies and gentlemen, you will need more than that for Pharaoh to let pe God's people go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh demands a greater sign than just a shout or a fall. Moses said, who shall I go and tell Pharaoh has sent me? He said, come, I am. Take your rod, cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. Pick it by the tail. Put your hand in your bosom. Brought it out and it was leprous. Put it back and it was whole. What was God doing to the man? At the end of that encounter, Moses said, I'm ready. He stands before Pharaoh and he says, I'm not here for a long discussion. Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may go and serve me. You will think after that wonderful rendition, Pharaoh would look at him and say, wow, I'm scared. So there is a God greater than all the gods we've known. <laughs> Pharaoh laughed at him and said, you're wasting your time. You've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of witchcraft, the center of wizardry. And after nine plagues, the Bible tells us that one last plague that this mighty God brought. I want you to know that every deliverance you see in the Bible came on the strength of power, not discussion. Once upon a time, there were three Hebrew boys who refused to bow to the 90 feet stature of Nebuchadnezzar. They said, we have been taught to honor government, but on this matter, as touching our faith, we will not bow. And they, they, they increased the fire in the furnace. The Bible says those who threw them were burned by the fire. But as soon as they got in there, let me show you the ministry of power. They saw four men. One was already there. The chains that were used to hold their hand and their feet it was loosed on his own accord and they were walking around there the bible says in daniel 3 men who the fire had no power over how about daniel in the lion's den he was thrown there and left for dead and by morning the king would come and say oh daniel has the god whom you serve is he able, that means is his power that far to shut the mouth of lions and right from a pit, Daniel says, oh live forever king. The God whom I serve has sent his angel. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up exalted i receive i manifest your power your wisdom till the nations see jesus Lift it up, 
glorify so breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life will you breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life i do not know any man in church history you start from the book of acts down to modern history they were ordinary men until power came did you hear what i said they were ordinary men until power arrived collision with genuine power turns a man into a sign and a wonder i have read the stories of great men and women of god in modern history ladies and gentlemen i think we need to go back to history and see the kinds of men that this earth had produced in christ we don't come close to the manifestations of power that these men had and saw in their meetings i can tell you that the things that we pride about were child's play you will not even be qualified to be a preacher by our standard today in their days no way no, they will send you back to the wilderness for training. These were men who carried power. The Bible says men whom the earth was not worthy of. Hallelujah. They brought elemental forces under control. These guys, these guys were in power. And even the governments of the day knew. It was not by shouting. They demonstrated a dimension of grace, of grace and power. Oh, may God restore us. May God restore us. May God restore genuine power to the church. Genuine power to the church. Hallelujah. When God called me to ministry, I cried and I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, please do not send me with a message alone. I know the kind of world that I was born into. The world of our parents were people who were given to loyalty. Even if they don't agree with you, they will respect you. But this world we have been sent to, they need a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Are we together now? There are many alternatives today to our world. And I said yesterday that if we do not restore genuine power to the body of Christ, we are going to literally lose a demography to the devil. The average preacher, among the many things that we preach, we ask people to give up witchcraft. We ask people to give up certain negative satanic traditional practices. And then we propose to them that on coming to Jesus, there is superior power to birth and bring solutions. And many of them have left these hidden works of darkness and unrighteousness. And then on coming to church, they met a plethora of disappointments. I could run to a shrine and then by the next day I get favor in the office. Now you've told me to give up that shrine and you told me that Jesus was powerful enough. Now I love him beyond miracles but can there be a consolation to my Christian experience? Hallelujah. I cried to the Lord and I said, Father, I do not want the kind of ministry where I misrepresent you because of the bankruptcy of power. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but the demonstration of power, that your faith will not rest upon the wisdom of men, but the power of God. Hallelujah. In Bible days, they never had to tell anybody that they came to church or they met Jesus, there was always a spiritual souvenir that they took back. So you would watch someone come oppressed, possessed, and return in his sound mind. Who will not come to such a God? Who will not bow before such a God? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to join me in this campaign to cry for a genuine restoration a restoration of power to the church listen 
we were not just commissioned with a mandate we were commissioned with power hallelujah i've had the honor and the privilege of traveling across a few nations and i have seen what the power of god can do i have seen systems shut down when they see a jesus that works tl osborne wrote a very powerful book the message that works there is a message that does not work propositions without the engracing to defend it jesus heals amen no healing jesus lifts amen no lifting jesus can turn your life around amen to a point where sometimes if we are not careful members get used to our powerlessness their amen is just to help put a full stop to what we're saying but there is no genuine expectation do you know what it will mean if after this conference from the north to the south, east and the west of South Africa, men suddenly arise. Every altar becomes a place of fire, a place of power. Sunday services, fire. Wednesday services, fire. By the Spirit of God, when the sick are healed, just when you are about to recover from that news that is on papers, then here comes another one. A man who had been blind, known to everybody. Now his eyes open. Then we hear that someone somewhere who had been crippled for years now gets up from his chair. Come on now. I receive, I manifest, your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest in my generation your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorify so breathe lord breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life say breathe lord breathe lord breathe breathe lord hallelujah so God can send you and say go to this region and you step in there like an inferno of fire in a matter of weeks mighty manifestations of the power of God can I tell you the world of men was designed to not ignore the miraculous it is impossible for the world of men to see genuine miracles manifestations of the hand of God and ignore it no it is not a product you find in the market you don't find power in a bank you don't find power in a library it resides within the office of the Holy Spirit I came to provoke a holy anger within your spirit this is not the church Jesus died for. Not yet. Not yet. We are still becoming and we can insist. Every man of God can insist. Every worshiper can insist. Every apparatusiata. Every businessman can insist. A restoration of power to the church. Genuine power. Listen. Isn't it a shame today? That because of the extent of powerlessness in the church unfortunately painfully unfortunately that there are people who can coin miracles that did not happen such an indictment to the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the extent that if something happens now people have to verify was it really God when you are prophesying or ministering in the spirit you have to Put guards because they, they are, the, the first part of call is suspicion. Come on now. 
Harus. I said in my lifetime, I will be one of those that God will use to restore power. Genuine power. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Once again, the world will know that Jesus died indeed. They are tired of our stories. They need to see a demonstration of the life of God, the power of God, the ministry of the Spirit. We bring the ministry of the Spirit to the nations in a way that all and sundry will be forced to admit that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. John chapter 3 and verse 2. He says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. He says, for no man. <clears throat> this is not a product that is affordable in the world of men. If you find men with it, they outsource it from a dimension that is beyond the earth. No man can do these miracles which thou doest. Except, that means there is a condition. Ordinarily, men should not walk in that level of power. How do you look at a nation and say by this time tomorrow, not in a radio station? How do you look at a nation and say by this time tomorrow? It's like saying by this time tomorrow, everybody in this place and in South Africa will be the owner of a home. How dare in our world they will jail you for provoking the expectations of people. Jesus tells 5,000 people, you imagine a crowd of hungry people like this, having tabernacled for over three days. He said, do not let them go like this. It will be an indictment on the revelation of God as merciful and compassionate. Give them something to eat. Ah, Jesus, don't cause trouble. You are already an enemy of government. Don't add that trouble. And he says, no. A young lad comes with, with how many loaves now? Five loaves and two fish. And he lifts it gives thanks and say go and distribute it imagine leaving that crusade and you go back what did you eat i'm fine what happened i was served from which bakery who did that jesus will you go for the next crusade of course he meets a woman at the well and such display of intelligence and wisdom and power she first thought he was one of the customers. Perhaps the seventh husband on his way coming. And after that discussion, she said, no, I sense you are a prophet. Come see a man. Come see a man. That is the message of a woman who met power. Come see a man. How about the madman in Gadara? The Bible says that man had the destiny of an evangelist. And the devil had picked him and chained him literally chained a territory by the bondage of one man but as soon as jesus arrived there came by the spirit we are legion i don't have that time he says go with one word of power and authority the bible says they came and they met the man sitting with jesus in his right mind became an evangelist South Africa, this is not just to excite us. I will show you one more key and then we'll pray. Please sit down. Please sit down. You've been standing. Let there be a restoration. Genuine power. Genuine power. Genuine power. I'm just seeing wind moving over this place now. This is what I see in the spirit. It's a mighty wind that is resting upon people. It's what I'm seeing. There is an activation happening to your spirit man. Please be sensitive. receive manifest his power 
is wisdom receive manifest Hallelujah. his power is wisdom receive manifest his power listen one of the first miracles that God used to announce this man you see standing before you many of you have heard the story many years ago someone had a very complicated medical issue spine broken confirmed medically they were waiting for a surgeon to come from India and perform that delicate surgery with a, a neck neck collar and all kinds of gadgets it was on phone I pray for this gentleman and I said do you believe now in truth I don't know today if I really believed that something was going to happen but I prayed anyway and as soon as I spoke over that gentleman I know that there was a shout there and he removed from the other end of the phone removed the neck collar bent and did what he could not do and he got up still with the phone and ran to his mother's room as soon as he opened the door the last thing I heard on phone was Jesus and that was it listen true story by the next day you know how you come to a man's house when he loses a loved one when people heard he was healed they said it was a lie they had to come and verify I know what the power of God can do I had to see the x-ray myself and see the gentleman before and after come on now look let me tell you the truth genuine results at the end of any argument it's true don't downplay results you will be joking not in today's world do you know from that time i started having calls from nurses and doctors within the same hospital sir i've been having an issue i didn't tell anybody nobody will tell you their problems until they are sure you have the power to solve their problems did you hear what i said nobody will waste their time and open up the secrets of their heart listen let me tell you this results are so powerful that a patient can stand before a doctor who is as young as his child or his grandchild and even strip himself if need be without shame because that child is called a consultant and he has the power medically speaking to attend to a delicate issue hallelujah if you were taking your bath as a woman and i opened the door it will be an offense that i would demand to tell you i will have to tell you i'm sorry but when i come as a consultant i can perform a surgery and you are not ashamed let me tell you the truth until men see genuine power they will not open up their pain and their scars to be healed why should i open up my pain and my scars and at the end of it you just generally say let's pray and both me and you we know that nothing happened there where the carcasses are there the eagles the vultures all of them will come come see a man can i tell you south africa i'm praying for all of us but particularly with all due respect for ministers of the gospel all this talk of saying church is not growing i submit to you by the spirit of the living god there is one explanation the bankruptcy of genuine genuine power not stage managed power genuine power no our world has not yet invented technology that ignores power mm -mm. Mm -mm. study god's generals for a meeting that will start 6 p.m or 6 a.m by 2 3 people will come and stand outside when people see power they can excuse any other thing that is not right provided they know at the end of it if, if no matter what the excuse is a man tore the zinc in the bible and brought another person 
because he, they, they, we will discuss with the house owner later on but let this man be healed can I tell you the truth we must admit that we have sold a Jesus to the nations that is not the true representation of the one who died and rose again Paul's first sermon he said let it be known to you O Israel that this same Jesus you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ the Bible says the men were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do it says repent for the remission of your sin and you will receive this promise for the promise is unto you your children children's children as many as are far off even those that the Lord will call it's been my prayer even up until now father restore this dimension of grace where did we miss it where did we miss it hallelujah I submit to you sincerely what we call power in this generation bar we thank God but I can tell you in Bible days you will not be a preacher not with what we call power mm -mm. There was a man in the Bible called Samuel. The Bible says the word of God upon that man's lips did not fall to the ground. If Samuel looked at you and said, be blessed. This is beyond just shouting amen. You would begin to rejoice. One time when the donkey of Saul, the son of Kish, remember, was missing. For three days they went around searching. Not finding it, they said, we are wasting our time here. There is a prophet there is somebody we know that the word of God is strong with this man let's go and meet him they took a gift and as soon as they saw Samuel Samuel said no forget about the issue of the donkey you go up and I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul met Samuel the donkey from anywhere it was started returning home read your Bible Hebrews 11 Time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. We're talking about the governmental church. A church with authority and power indeed. Samuel was never seated on any throne, but he enthroned and dethroned kings. You could misbehave with anybody but not Samuel. To the point that God was ready to ordain David. But Samuel was still negotiating the continuity of Saul's reign. And God had to come to him and say, how long shall you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul already as king. Take on your horn. Go to the house of Jesse. You are delaying another person's destiny. Go and anoint that young boy. Hallelujah. Manifestations of genuine power. Not just supernatural power power translated as signs and wonders power translated as wisdom that science cannot explain power translated as dimensions of possibilities and realities is it not in your bible that the hand of the lord came upon elijah ladies and gentlemen on barefoot he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to Israel. is that not in your bible my bible says they shall take up they shall drink poison and they shall not die. COVID brought us to our knees and taught us a lesson that we need to know God more. Are we together now? Do you agree with me on that? It's an uncomfortable truth, but we have to admit it. We shouted that we had the life of God until COVID came. And because of a track record of our powerlessness, even the government did not consider it an advantage to leave us as support systems to people. They saw us as an interruption to ending that, that pandemic. But not John G. Lake. Mm -mm. Not John G. Lake. He proved to science that he was not a nuisance. Allow me go and pray for the people and they said, leave this place. You are an interruption to what we are doing. He said, now you take some of the foam from the mouth of those who had this thing. Place it on my hand. 
And history tells us that they checked it and it died. Hallelujah. And yet the Bible says, as he is. Have you read that in your Bible? That as he is, so are we. Now, my assignment tonight is not just to provoke anger in you and leave you in that state. I'm provoking your heart deliberately. Let me show you three keys to accessing the power of God. And then, I'll just pray for us and we'll wrap up tonight. God's power must be made available to the saints God's power must be put on display. Now listen, every believer in Christ has access to the empowerment of the spirit. But access does not equal possession. You can have access. Are we together? But you must understand the dynamics of possession. I can give you a check of 10,000 rams. That is access. But you have not possessed it yet because you are not able to use it in that state to do anything meaningful. You will need to know how to go and transact to convert it to cash or to whatever format that will suit you to transact with. Am I right on that? So we have access to power in Christ. But many believers have not understood the kingdom system. This is my assignment tonight. I want to show you how to be endued with power. Not just tell you to be endued with power. There is a system built in the dealings of God with men where ordinary men can encounter, they can become bona fide recipients of God's power. Hmm. Let's go to the school of power for three, five minutes. According to scripture, there are three biblical platforms for accessing empowerment. Empowerment that will cause us to be witnesses indeed. And please, I want you to pay attention. Number one, the first platform by which the saints become genuinely en empowered is an encounter with the spirit of power. A direct encounter with the spirit of power. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. A direct encounter with the spirit of power. There is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit called the spirit of power. It says, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. By the spirit of the Lord. A man can encounter God through your hunger. Are we together now? Your hunger can lead you to a solid encounter. By grace and by mercy. And out of that encounter, an intercourse will happen in the spirit. That leaves you an anointed version of yourself. Ordinary men. But when they encounter God, they left with power. Moses went to the burning bush as an ordinary man. A Jew who was running. He ran out of Egypt for his life. Having killed an Egyptian. But not when he met the God of the Hebrews. His ordinary rod became the rod of God. And he says, Moses, take up that rod wherewith you will walk signs and wonders. When he got to the Red Sea, he struck that rod and the river parted hither and tether, granting access on dry ground. Ladies and gentlemen, men can encounter power. Are we together? Men can encounter power. It was A.A. A. Allen who told his wife, darling, I'm going to pray. I will lock up myself and I'm not coming out of that place until I meet God. That was what he said. I'm going to lock up myself, my dear wife. My apologies that you will not have my attention for a few days. But I'm looking for something that I can serve my generation with. And the Bible says John Lake, or history tells us, that John Lake went and locked up himself. Crying to the God of heaven. There is something about genuine cry that comes from the, a broken and a contrite heart. Remember, I taught you that in the Lord's Prayer... 
everything in the economy of heaven is centered around kingdom come and the will of God. So if your pursuit, your request, your petitions and all that you desire is not to glorify Christ, that prayer already, you don't need an attack, it will not be answered. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Then because of your kingdom, give us this day our daily bread. Because of your kingdom, forgive us our trespasses. Because of your kingdom, lead us not into temptation. Because of your kingdom, deliver us from evil. Everything is with respect to kingdom come and his will being done. There's no time to share with you stories of my own life. Times when I locked myself sincerely with a heart crying to God. I just went there to pour my heart to say, Lord, if you are, if, if, if you are looking for vessels that can carry genuine power and herald your name to the nations, here is an available and usable vessel. Hallelujah. An encounter with the spirit of power. Someone after this conference, that's when your own retreat starts. You will need to go somewhere and lock yourself and say, Lord, I'm not looking for power for a name. I'm not looking for power so that they call me Apostle Joshua Selman the Great. That is a mundane pursuit. I seek this genuine impartation because I want to see your name lifted. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see climate shift over cities and territories by the Spirit of God. When it has to do with the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same, God's answer will always be yes and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, many of us fast. Many of us pray. I can tell you why the fasting and prayer of this generation only leaves us lean and maybe with an encounter with familiar spirits. Do you know why? Because it was lust that drove us into that secret place in the first place. So I saw, I, I've seen what Apostle Felix has done. No, I'm also a human being. And you take it as a mundane challenge that leads you to fast 40 days dry. Your heart was already corrupted from day one. At best, you will only encounter the mercy of God in that place. He will tell you, my dear son, this labor in the spirit you are doing is not profitable because it's coming from a corrupted heart. Can I tell you, in my work with God, the privilege of studying the fathers of faith and the study of scripture, the most, uh, the most foundational basis for receiving anything from God, second only to his mercy and love, is your heart condition. Your heart condition vetoes your fasting, vetoes your prayer. You can fast all you want, and I'm not against it. You should know that. You can pray all you can, but if your heart is not right, how does your heart get right? Let me show you a scripture. Second Chronicles 25, verse 1 and 2. The Bible talks about a man called Amaziah. Second Chronicles 20. 25, 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture that will really bless your heart. Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. Is that in your Bible? He reigned 29 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. Shout verse 2 with all your heart. Are you ready? One to read. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord but not with a perfect heart. How do you do what was right? The activity was correct. The preaching was correct. The singing was correct. The giving was correct. However, it was not accepted because the Bible says not with a perfect heart. You can do ministry keeping all the rules right and wonder why it does not work. Maybe God is answering some preacher here. You are saying what is wrong? All the keys I have kept. That is where the thing is. I have written great songs. Why are my songs not going to the nations? This is where it is. 
because it is still your song ah! the songs we sing they all belong to you and even the air we breathe it all belongs to you belongs to you that is the generation that will access power genuinely that everything about your life it belongs to you Amaziah did what was right in the sight of God but not with a perfect heart. So the Bible says, I the Lord, I search the heart. I test the reins to give unto every man according to the state that I find there. So while you are praying, your heart is also praying and God is hearing both. Your mouth can be saying, Lord, I love you. And your heart can be saying, give me quickly. I need to make it. That God has the ability to hear the speakings of your heart. Is it not in your Bible? Say not in your heart. The heart has a voice. An encounter with the spirit of power demands genuine brokenness genuine brokenness that you get to a point where you are on your knees before the Lord and you say father this is not about me this is not just about a desire for fame this is not just about a I know you are trusting you need kingdom millionaires on earth you can trust me you can trust me by your grace that my pursuit for money is not just to make a name my pursuit for grace and anointing that everything that I seek is to see the nation see you revealed. That's why God brought this song. Can I tell you, I submit to you by the spirit of the living God. You know, people say, Apostle, you are humble. My humility is not, it's not it did not come by default. It's a revelation. When you understand how powerful God is and how much he can do without you, how he how much he can do without you it becomes an eternal privilege for you to be used by god mm. that revelation will strangle pride naturally and forever humility is not something that you struggle with mechanically it is a revelation a product a conclusion a way of life that is a conclusion there is something you, when you encounter God and you see the vastness of his power you will join the psalmist to say what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man must you use me you created the heavens and the earth without my assistance you have not become that powerless and if you have chosen to use me then it remains an eternal privilege listen this is the kind of orientation that workers must have in church. Are we together? Oh, I tell you an uncomfortable truth. God can do without you. Get over it. He can do without you. Number two. Let's hurry up. The second platform to encounter the power of God. Genuine power that speaks his purposes to the nations. Are you ready? The second dimension of his power is his power that is accessed by encountering his word. The power of God that is accessed when you encounter his word. The word of God indeed carries light and it carries within it power. Are we learning? Mm. Habakkuk chapter 3, 3 and 4. Please give us amplified. Let's hurry up. A lady will begin to laugh in the spirit. That laughter is not just a carnal laughter, there is a manifestation. A birthing of something in the spirit. Now, 
when God does these things, it is because he is making people. This convergence, the Holy Spirit is hovering around us and there are things that he's doing within our spirit. God approaching from Sinai, he comes from Edom or Teman. And the Bible says the Holy One from Mount Paran. His splendor and majesty covers the heavens and the earth is full of his praise. Now read verse 4 if you are a Christian. Ready? His brightness is like the sunlight. He has bright rays flashing from his hand. And there in the sunlight splendor is the hiding place of his power. That God's power has a location. He hides it in his light. And the only way to find that light is to find his word. Because it is the entrance of his word that giveth light. A man can stay with the word of God. And from it light. Reminds me of a vision that I had many years ago. I've shared this vision endless times. That I was standing before a giant door. And it had many smaller doors. And I noticed there were scriptures like a post office box. Written on all of the smaller doors. They were opening and closing. And every time they opened, light came out from it. And the spirit of the living God told me, every time you catch a revelation of scripture, the power that is behind it falls upon you so that you can defend what you now call revelation. Revelation is not revelation to you until you can demonstrate its reality. There is a power component that follows every scripture. If you tell me you know the scripture, I don't need to argue with you. I will look for the power component that was sent to back up that speaking. So when you say I have caught a revelation of prosperity, I don't need to argue with you. I will have to check your life to verify there is a light component. If you say you have caught a revelation of influence, I will not need to argue with you. Let me see how the nations treat you in light of the power that you have now accessed. If the nations reject you, you have not caught it yet. Go back to the school of the spirit. Do you believe what you are hearing? An encounter with the word. I believe that after this conference, there are people who will open their Bibles in the night while others are sleeping. And the Holy Spirit, light. Ah, light. And it shall come to pass, maybe for someone, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. Listen. Let me tell you sincerely, and I say this with every sense of humility. When God gave me the revelation of that scripture, I was in one room. And it came as light. Exalted above all the nations of the earth. No exemption. I said, so there is a grace like this that can elevate a man. And bring you to a position where kings and nobles, governments, they will call you father. Father. Do you understand what God is doing in this place? Man of God, it's time for the Bible to stop being a newspaper or a storybook and turn into spirit and life. There's no time to talk about the word, but you see, look at me, please. There are three major layers to scripture. The first layer to scripture is called a historic or archaeological layer because the Bible is a historic manual. Are we together now? There are people who are not Christians that use the Bible as reference material because they are writing their, their dissertation, their thesis or whatever it is. So there is a historic and archaeological layer to scripture. Number two, there is a doctrinal layer to scripture. And then number three, there is a prophetic layer to scripture. Are we together? Now there are two things that must happen before scripture opens up to you. The book must be open and the seals must be broken. Did you hear what I said? The book must be open and the seals must be broken. 
It is your responsibility to open the book, but you cannot break the skins. It is the spirit of revelation that comes. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Are we together? I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seven seals. You can open the book, but it is still closed in the spirit. You will not see anything. At best, you will just see the historic and archaeological layer. But when the seals are broken, then your eyes can see two men were on their way to Emmaus and Jesus, the word, was in their midst discussing with them. But because their eyes were not open, they were talking with the word and not transformed by it. The Bible says, but when they sat at table, he broke the bread and their eyes were open and he vanished. Proximity to the word is not the same as revelation. No. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified South Africa pray with me breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. One more time, say, breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. The spirit of power can come, Ruach HaKodesh can breathe upon a man and turn you into a sign and a wonder. Number two, you can encounter light from scripture and the Bible says in that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power. Let me give you number three. God is ready to blow up this building now. <laughs> Apostle Felix, can we blow up this building? <laughs> the third platform for accessing genuine power in the kingdom is through the mystery of impartation. Impartation is your ability to discern and align with vessels vessels that are carriers of genuine grace now watch this the economy of the spirit is such that the way god works is that when he wants to anoint a people he does not start by anointing everyone he finds a man and through the sacrifice of alignment he will call that man are we together now and pour into that man a dimension of his grace and power and that man for that dispensation becomes the official conduit point for accessing that dimension of power. This is not human worship. You will think that Paul, having met with Jesus, will never need any man to help him again. But as soon as Paul met with Jesus, it was Jesus himself that sent him to go and wait for a man to continue his ministry. Jesus met with Saul, but it was not Jesus that imparted Paul. He said, go, Ananias came and said, brother Saul, the same Jesus you saw has sent me to open up your eyes and that you be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. In the parable of the ten virgins, they were all virgins. So it was not an issue of sin and righteousness. It was wisdom and foolishness. And the foolishness was because the five 
did not have extra oil and it was time that revealed their foolishness provided it was not the longevity of the bridegroom delay showed the value of the extra oil that the wise carried and eventually they went to the wise and said give us of your oil they said no 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 let our own lambs die he left them with an instruction he said go to them that sell and buy there are them that sell only that you don't buy it with money you buy it with hunger you buy it with meekness you buy it with submission you buy it with service and the arrogance of this our generation is why there are genuine men there are very few people who are empowered everybody claims they know god for themselves everybody has gone to heaven everybody knows everything i'm not teaching you human worship but ladies and gentlemen god designed his economy for the distribution of graces to be men dependent hallelujah when he led captivity captive your bible says he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talent he gave men to men he gave men to men he gave men to men there are men that are called gifts they are not gifts because of anything by themselves they are gifts because of the pivotal role that they have to play in god's program are we together yes sir watch this listen to me please listen to me i started sharing part of what i'm sharing now when i had my time with our lovely family in kenya listen if you want to access the healing ministry on earth today now no matter who you are god will find a way of making sure directly or by materials through hunger among the many vessels you must connect with is the man Benny he do you know why because on earth today until he passes to glory he represents God's conduit point for distributing the healing anointing no matter your encounter with Jesus Christ eventually you want faith today start from any man of God who imparts you eventually you will arrive at Copeland this is not human worship there are people who have turned themselves to demigods. This is not what I'm teaching. Let me repeat myself. There are people who based on revelations like this make themselves as demigods trying to own people's destiny. This is what has made the church become an ugly place. So people make it look like I am a gift from God. After all, apostle is saying this. So let me balance it so that we do not transmit error while communicating truth. I am not advocating human worship and for those who are part of it, if you are here, repent now. This is the conference to repent. Once and for all. Among the many things man was given dominion over, men were not part of it. Did you hear what I said? Among the many things, God listed everything man had dominion over. Man was not part of it. When you dominate and subjugate men, it is sin against God. All men of God are faithful stewards. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. A good shepherd lays down his life. When you love God's people, you love the sheep said, you will not manipulate them. You will not prophesy lies. You will not take advantage of their vulnerability because of their honor for you. I am saying it again. And with every sense of love, you are a man of God here in South Africa, or anywhere following perhaps you may have been wrongly mentored but it doesn't matter in any case you found yourself manipulating people at any point I don't condemn you but repent repent don't shrug it away and say it's not an issue repent because in this prophetic move there are certain talents that God will collect and add to others God himself 
there are certain losses that will not be caused by demons do you know let me tell you the truth it is God's design that every territory will have apostolic and prophetic voices that herald and maintain his program I said this in Kenya that the apostolic ministry is saddled with the responsibility of spiritual governance not just preaching a true apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ has the assignment of accessing light the blueprint of the spirit of God the dimension of God he wants to be seen and known per dispensation and then with intelligence and love communicate it to the body so that the body will be strengthened on that wise are we together we have abused
recovery and restoration you stand under their unction it does not matter what has left you they will call it like Saul's donkey back home he gave gifts to men he gave gifts to men there are people who can step into a city whether a poster is there or not there is an anointing within them that ripples the entire circumference of that territory and will command a mysterious convergence of men he gave gifts to men there are men who have grace they will stand and hold on to the horns of the altar and when they lift their voice and cry to heaven they will shift climates as a single person he gave gifts to men there are people who God has endowed with such dimension for wealth and abundance for the sake of the body if their ATM gets missing somebody will wake up from his sleep the anointing will wake that person and say I don't know but God said I should send you this and you cannot explain their life is mysterious you will think they're on drugs or they are some, on some kind of thing he gave gifts to men there are people who will sit down and write songs I came in and I heard the song that you were singing by the way I think we'll sing that song you try to compose a song you went to school sit down and try to compose a song and see the kind of thing you will compose it is your loved ones who will rebuke you and say bury that song quickly don't bring reproach to the name of the lord and yet there are people as they walk on the street that anointing while they are taking their bath he gave gifts to men there are people who have a governmental anointing if they step into a territory and they tell you i will be president or i will be governor be careful to not laugh at them they may not have the, the, the form and the fashion, but there is an unction that creates space for them. He gave gifts to men. Now please listen to me. I said this for a reason. It's an impartation service tonight. Many years ago, you've heard my story. I have I've become a fisher, not just of men in terms of souls, but when I found out that accessing genuine anointing in the body of Christ in partnership with the spirit is men dependent I told myself I'm not going to waste my time in pride again there are them that sell use the currency of honor the currency of the purity of heart the currency of consecration the currency of truth and over the last decade or so in my life I have spent it by the privilege of God's grace before some of these men some today have transited in glory but some are still alive I have had the honor of having rare and unique impartations from these men believe me he gave gifts to men every challenge is at the mercy of the anointing sent to confront it and when you do not find that anointing it will look like an unbearable burden but not when the anointing comes there are pastors here if you prepare your sermon back to back for one month you will almost die of depression because the spirit of revelation is not there you will search the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and not find what to preach stop struggling there is the grace for revelation he gave gifts to men South Africa understand my message so when you see the apostle of the Lord come and honor men honor when you honor a man it's not human worship it is discernment that this man is an a unique expression of God and there is a deposit of spirit substance within that man that if explored through honor can become an advantage for you he gave gifts to men kneeling down for hands to be laid on you I assure you 
does not guarantee impartation. You can even fall down and the man of God knows nothing left him to you. It's just that he laid hands on you so you stop disturbing him. But, but he knows under God that nothing left him. Most people have not seen a genuine impartation. They have seen charismatisms of falling down and standing up. But a spirit transfer. No. Very few people have encountered it. But tonight, within the few minutes we have, God has brought us here so that certain journeys that have become unbearable, certain reproach that you have carried in your Christian experience, for some of us, your name has become Ichabod, that you have become a testimony of shame and reproach. And men are saying, but I, I, I know this person loves God. There are graces available with the, within the body that can empower men. And within the few minutes that we have, I'm taking out time to say this. I wish I had time to walk this scripture, but I'm going to be praying for you now. And ladies and gentlemen, if you like, you can ignore it. Save Johnny as you learn a painful lesson after 10 or 20 years, sojourning this difficult and complicated world. But for someone you have come to the end of yourself, perhaps the end of your ministry and you are saying it can't be this way no no there has to be a way out god called me to be a prophet and yet i have not prophesied every prophetic word i brought it seemed like a lie and i know i am not fake there is an unction i have ignored i made a statement in kenya I want to make it now and then we'll pray every name you call in the Bible is not just the name of a person it represents a spiritual pathway that produces a kind of glory in a believer so when you say Abraham Abraham is not just the name of a patriarch Abraham is the definition of a spiritual pathway that if you follow it will leave you blessed Esther is not just the name of a young village girl who later married Ahasuerus. I, I mean, I married the king. Esther is the name of a spiritual pathway that defines how God can lift someone from a lowly estate and put you in a position of authority. Are we together? Gideon is not just the name of a weak man who fought the Midianites. Gideon is the name of a spiritual pathway that can take a man from the list of his father's house and empower you. You know it is the Holy Spirit training you because you should start looking like someone in scripture. As the Holy Ghost starts working with you, you are a worship minister, you should start looking like the psalmist. The consecration of the psalmist must be the demand upon you. The songs, the inspiration, the spirit of worship. Apostle, God has called me to be a man of influence. Do you look like Joseph of Arimathea? Do you look like Joseph in the Bible? All the Josephs were Josephs because of the grace for influence. Now, you know immediately that you have been misled or you are in error when you cannot find a parallel that matches your training. Your journey should be consistent with a name in the Bible. You should be able to, as you walk with God, praying and fasting, building capacity. You should start looking and say, but this is Ruth forming. This is Esther forming. This is Mary forming. Why is God so about my womb? What is it about my womb that God will not allow me marry just any man? Could it be that that is Mary? Because there is a savior coming out of you. Who will judge the mount of Esau? Listen, this revelation is the cure for unhealthy comparison. Because you can start your spiritual journey with a friend and a colleague. But God will divert you to look like several people according to the nature of your assignment. Are you ready to receive? Please rise.
breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord upon my life breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life I receive and manifest ah, your power and your wisdom till the nations Lifted up, exalted, exalted. I receive, I receive, I manifest, I manifest your power, your power, and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. name of Jesus the son of the living God I want to pray now let me start with ministers of the gospel father there are men and women called of God that need to access superior dimensions of impartation for ministry for efficiency of ministry with integrity and with power therefore I stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names everyone who is called into ministry right now this moment let this grace and this unction rest upon you now let this grace rest upon you now those called into the prophetic ministry let me activate that grace bring them out prophets receive that grace i stir up that fire my god help them i stir up that fire men and women 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 carry that fire help this woman hold her hold her receive that grace the eyes that see the ears that hear, I stir it up. South Africa, receive an impartation. Prophetic mantles, let it fall. 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 Let it fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God Hallelujah Now watch this I'm seeing a book in the realm of the spirit And I'm seeing that book open and light is coming out of it And the Lord is saying he's imparting the grace for prophetic revelation The grace for teachers Where are they? Paris Kabaratos Yata access to the oh, mysteries of the kingdom I impart that grace now I impart that grace now I impart that grace now I impart that grace receive the eyes that see access to the mysteries of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Watch this please. Hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a grace for visibility. Just because you are gifted 
does not mean the nations will see you and place a demand on you no there are many gifted people genuinely gifted but the grace for visibility is not there neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that when that grace comes upon you the borders of nations are open for you mysteriously it was noised abroad that jesus was in town let me pray for someone there is someone here you have worked on yourself but it's time for the nations to know that god has made an investment in you receive that grace right now receive that grace for visibility receive that grace for visibility receive the grace for visibility hallelujah there is a man of God I'm seeing in my spirit the Lord is saying he wants to answer the prayers that you have been praying this man of God has been crying for genuine encounters of power and the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands that the weight of his power and grace is about to rest upon your head in the name of Jesus wherever that man of God is I stretch my hands right now drink of this wine in the name of Jesus let that grace rest upon you this moment let that grace rest upon you this moment let that grace rest upon you this moment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah one of God's generals before he went to be with the Lord he left a prophecy on earth Lester Sumrall is his name and he said before Christ returns there will be a resurrection of the healing mantle that it will be restored to the church I'm saying that because I want to release something upon someone and the Lord told me that the healing ministry will be restored as it was in the 40s, the 50s and the 60s I have seen this in my visions many times and the Lord told me I, I hope you believe it Africa is going to spearhead a healing move not just an apostolic and a prophetic move a mighty manifestation of healing mantles both men and women will carry this grace genuine miracles I don't know those who came here if there is anyone here who is part of that prophetic army wherever you are I stretch my hands let this healing mantle I stand in agreement with all the graces here as it were for Catherine Kuhlman Amy Semple McPherson, Maria Woodward Eater, John G. Lake, in the name of Jesus, the T.L. Osborns, we stand by covenant in the name of Jesus. Let that grace rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Hallelujah. Now please listen to me. There is a grace for influence even in areas of governance this is called the governmental church and i'm glad to know that there are people here i know there's a judge here there's a speaker here i believe that they came as witnesses that god wants to bring this grace upon believers gone are the days where people who occupy the seats of government do not call upon the name of the lord South Africa, if you have the faith to believe, I stand in faith with all the graces that are here and I pray the men and women who must rise from this conference to occupy positions in parliament, strategic prophetic positions, wherever you are, may this mantle, this grace that enthrones, this kingmaker anointing, wherever you are, may that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Allah Nobody prays. 
nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, I want to do something prophetic here. And I hope that Apostle Felix will allow me just something before I make the altar call and wrap up. I'm going to request with all due respect we'll start with our father so he can speak and then just return but I want to call three or four or five men of God to represent the system of God's grace and prophetic distribution and I'm going to ask them I did the same thing in Kenya to release out of the abundance of that which is locked up from within their spirit mm. yes sir he gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. There are some of you, you have, you have struggled in every area of life. You are not a failure, but life is hard. Simple things become difficult for you. There is a grace that you need. There is a grace that you need. Are we together? Some of you are intellectuals. You have studied to the highest level and yet the nations and even your government cannot place demand upon your knowledge because you can be gifted but your gift must be anointed. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you have been rejected by every system that can lift you. There is a grace you need. Stop struggling unnecessary. Government rejected you. The academia rejected you. The economic world rejected you. To try and try, the Bible says, respectfully speaking, the labor of the fool will weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Men of God, you are in ministry. Some of you have come and you have seen this conference and sincerely not from a standpoint of jealousy, you have desired that God will honor you and bring consolation to your Christian experience rather than sitting down and assuming that this is luck. No. Human beings are not stupid. You don't gather people just by posters. You go and produce a poster and see if people will come. No. There are angels that noise abroad. They are sent to signify graces. Some of you are worship ministers. There are songs that you have written. If South Africa should hear that song, it can both become a blessing and become a reward system for you. But the grace that announces you is not there. How about those who say members come to my church? They receive an impartation, they are blessed, and then they leave because there is a grace that keeps. Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost except the son of perdition. And for that, that scripture might be fulfilled. Hear me? Some of you are businessmen. You may have heard me say it. There are times that your boat is right. There are times you are in the right location, the sea. Your net is right. Your skill is correct. Yet, you will not catch fish. It is not all about a wrong principle. There are times that everything is correct. What was wrong with Peter's not catching fish? He was a fisherman. He had his net. He was at the right location on the sea. He was using a boat. Yet, at that point, you don't need skill again. This is the prophetic dimension of lifting. Jesus said, little children, have you any catch? He said, no. He said, cast your net to the right side. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'm going to respectfully ask if you can get another mic for us just to represent God's people. I want to plead that our father and then Apostle Felix and then um, Reverend Ike, perhaps this, this, this will be fine for representing priesthood and I'll just give our father the mic to just declare over you so that he can return to his seat and then we're going to pray 
I wish I had the time would have selected a few people that represent other areas that are non-ministerial per se because there, ha there can be a distribution of graces. Some of you unfortunately are related to these people and yet you have not carried the grace. Proximity does not lead to impartation. It takes discernment and it takes honor. You can be married to a man carrying a grace. You are sleeping on the same bed forever and yet nothing will come upon your head. Sir. Me katos zembra haketeke ropeke tokina busa risketene rakatenge rumekata from this day rikomusa from this minute I command a supernatural panorama from nothing let there be something. I said from nothing, there is something. From this moment, you shall become another man. From this moment, you have been turned to another man. Receive this grace now. Shout Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us of Saul, of Saul. He said, When you're going, he said, Three men from Tavoir shall come and they will carry bread and presents for you by the order of the apostolic. As you depart this conference, the men that will give you bread, they shall find you. I said they shall find you. Yeah. Listen. The Bible says that when Samuel asked for Saul to come up, it was the man that had the shekel that was brought to them. They asked him to come up also. There was no room prepared for him. It was for Saul. But because of that obedience, a room was prepared. I stand by the order of the prophetic. Where they said there was no room for you. Today, she up. I said, room open. You will find space. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible declares in Luke chapter 2 and the 52nd verse. He said, and the child Jesus, he grew in wisdom and stature and had favor it means that the child Jesus had wisdom that gave him stature that's what he meant that word stature there was influence and that influence gave him favor before God and man by the order of scripture and the mandate of this conference I declare the wisdom of God upon your life it will give you influence and you will find favor in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord spoke to me in the beginning of this conference. And he showed me a scepter in the spirit. And he said to me that mantles will be distributed in this conference. Mantles of prosperity. Mantles of authority. Hallelujah. Mantles of positions, yes, mantles of anointings, yes, and as the one sent as the convener of this conference, I command a distribution now. Receive your portion, receive your portion in the name of Jesus. Peter told the church has been deemed the poor to the point that there is a phrase they use as poor as the church rat listen we were talking earlier and we said that anybody who ignores the place of money cannot do ministry in these last days 
it takes resources like he always say to lift up the name of Jesus because that name is heavy and I believe that in these last days God is going to raise the Joseph of Arimathea men and women who carry the authority to command the wealth of nations like Isaac the Philistines will say, go from us because thou art mightier than us. And so there is a mantle of prosperity that is on this ministry. That one I know of. There is a mantle of prosperity that's upon this ministry. And from this altar, Ashakepa, Papaluze, Eberu Shikala, I command a distribution of the mantle of prosperity. In the name of Jesus. You shall be turned to another man. As you leave this conference, you shall be turned to another man. You shall be turned to another man. You shall be turned to another man. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, this is time for authority to be bestowed upon the church. Lift up your hands to heaven. There is a new fire that's coming. There's a fresh fire. It's being released right now. Receive your portion. Let the fire move from this altar. Let it go now. Let it go now. Receive fire for your next level. Receive fresh fire for your next level. For your next revival. Receive fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, two more impartations that I want you to receive. Hallelujah. There is a grace for encounters. Listen, the Bible says, Blessed is the man whom the Lord causes to approach him. You don't just see God because you want to see God. There is a grace that grants you access to the holy place. And by the privilege of God's grace, some of us have found favor with God on that wise. What we have done, we cannot explain. But it's an election of grace. He has extended a right hand of fellowship into dimensions in the spirit. Paul said, I was taken up in the spirit and I saw things that were beyond description. Things he could not write. Ladies and gentlemen, your confidence in this kingdom is predicated upon the kinds of encounters you have. That's right. The God you encounter is the God you reveal to your world. Did you hear what I said? The God you encounter is the God you cannot reveal another man's God to your world. But the people that do know they are God. I want to pray for you. This prayer may not be for everybody, but I'm praying for someone whose hunger has reached the heavens. And there is a cry from within your spirit. Lord, I want to know you. I'm tired of just playing church. I'm tired of talking about a God whose power I cannot bring on display. In the name that is above all names, I stand upon this altar and I decree and declare the grace that calls men to deeper encounters in the spirit. Let that grace and that fire, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now upon your ministry oh that in the night while you are sleeping the vistas of heaven will be open unto you may your eyes see may your ears hear in the name of jesus christ finally hear me there is a grace for honor you know what honor is Honor means to be perceived and to be rewarded to match your true worth. Man that is in honor and understandeth not 
there is no government in any nation even when there was famine there were two people who were not affected the king and the prophet all other men women were eating their children except the king and the prophet priesthood and kingship gives you immunity and the bible says we are both that we have been made unto our God. Revelations 5.10 Kings and priests. No wonder when they say there is a casting down. The nature of our call and our identity should immune us from the vicissitudes of life. Listen to me ladies and gentlemen. I want to pray this grace upon you. Can I tell you? Every generation has men they look up to that represent the speakings of God in their lifetime. There are many preachers, there are many businessmen, there are many captains of industry, but there are names when you call, the generation knows they are there. I want to release this grace upon you. Believe me, believe me, there is a grace that keeps a man relevant throughout the lifetime of his generation. The Bible says, and David served God in his generation and slept with his fathers when you are talking about governance you are talking about being strategically relevant as far as a dispensation is concerned and as far as the program of God is concerned let it never be that in your lifetime men you say you once were great you once were need you were a voice that people used to hear there are people in every nation you can look 10 years back they were relevant in ministry in worship, in music economically speaking and all that is left now are stories of yesteryears. Did your Bible not say the path of the just is as a shining light that shined more and more unto the perfect day. The grace to remain relevant throughout the dispensation that God has placed you in. In the name of Jesus I call upon the God of my covenant may that mantle rest upon you now that no power and no force of hell will quench your candle you will remain relevant through your entire dispensation no force of darkness will edge you out of relevance especially for preachers it will never be said you were once great it will never be said you were once impactful it will never be said you were once anointed it will never be said you were once on demand as touching God's grace upon your life. Receive the grace for relevance, longevity of impact. I place that grace upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Our time is gone, but let me one minute will not take testimonies. But just lay your hands if you are trusting God for a healing miracle or you are trusting God to bring any captivity in your life to an end. We are wrapping up but I have to do justice to speak over your life. Go ahead. Lay your hands. Any part of your body you came with a medical report. You came with someone with some medical report. Perhaps a death sentence. Maybe some cancer, HIV, blood disease, kidney failure. Whatever it is. We can't talk about government without allowing the power of God to bring life and healing to many. You may not be sick, but perhaps you have, you have been surrounded by circles of tragedy and failure, repeating themselves back to back. Here is your liberty now. Lay your hands and let me speak over your life. And this also involves, it should involve all those who are following online. Here is your chance to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with the man of God and all the graces here connected. We stand under this corporate anointing and I pray for everyone who is sick in his or her body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command the spirit of infirmity to leave your body now. Amen. I command the spirit of infirmity to leave your body now. Amen. Let God's people go now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I declare be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
every blind eye be open in the name of Jesus Amen. deaf ears be open in the name of Jesus Amen. bone conditions be corrected now in the name of Jesus Amen. any growth in your body whether cancerous or not we command it to die now Amen. kidney problems liver problems lung problems be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. hepatitis be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. lumbar spondylosis be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. pile be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. rheumatoid arthritis be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. any joint pain around your body be healed this moment in the name of Jesus Amen. sugar diabetes be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. and for those who have loved ones I see some of you lifting points of contact in the name that is above all names wherever they are we declare right here from house of treasures may the power of God touch them wherever they are Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. For everyone here in business, in the name that is above all names, right from where you are, rise to the place of destiny. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Come on. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, please lend me your attention for the next minute or two. I've been given the honor of making the altar call. Minimize movement. Everyone stand, please, if you can, except for the few people in front here, but I would request everyone to stand. The Lord is giving someone another opportunity tonight. Perhaps this is your first attendance of this conference, or you have been here and yet not convicted enough to make it right with Jesus. In this prophetic atmosphere, Jesus extends his hand of love to you, giving you an opportunity to be a partaker of his life, to win that war against sin, the flesh, unrighteousness, death, hell, and the grave once and for all. The Bible says as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You have a choice to reject Jesus, like many have done, sadly to their detriment. Or you can make up your mind and say, Apostle, in this atmosphere, I am ready to be surrendered totally to him. I'm going to count one to five for sake of time. And wherever you are, in honor to Jesus and to your destiny, I want to give you an opportunity to run out here. You can use either my left or my right as I count one to five and for those who want to rededicate their lives to Jesus saying in this conference and from all that I've heard I confess that I need him and I'm not ashamed to come and stand before the nations and declare my love for Jesus I count one to five now run from your seat and come and stand here I begin my counting one let's honor them as they come Two, you don't have to kneel, just stand so there can be more space. Young and old, male, female, rich and poor, come. It is his desire that all men be saved and then to come into the knowledge of the truth. Come to Jesus. Come on, South Africa, are you celebrating salvation? Encourage them as they come. Come in your numbers. The blood of Jesus is able to cleanse and to save even to the uttermost do not be ashamed and do not be afraid welcome to a family of love jesus extends his hand the government of heaven invites you it's a feast of fat things eternal life it is called yes sir come three i count five and then i begin to pray let's keep clapping they are coming coming to jesus four In Jesus name I pray now on behalf of Jesus Christ and on behalf of his servant I appreciate and I welcome all of you for making this bold decision some of you are crying there's nothing to be ashamed of 
the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away it's the wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom hallelujah and so I want to lead you to make this noble decision let it be from your heart as you confess with your mouth may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender say this after me as loud as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I remain a child of God forever amen keep your beautiful hands lifted as I speak over you father based on the authority of scripture I declare their sins forgiven I call you bona fide recipients of eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life and now I commend you to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus recipients of eternal life indeed for in Jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed and the church says amen, amen. put Hallelujah. your hands together for the Lord Come on, come on. All right, now, now, just wait. Everybody at the main entrance, can you all clear off, please? Listen, we love Jesus and we respect Jesus in this house. Come back. I don't know where you are hurrying to. Somebody hurried out of church and rushed out before service closed and had accident on the way home. I don't know where you are going. My friend, we need to get these people so that we can get their contact details so please clear off nobody leaving can everybody at the gate go back to your seats quickly all right now can you just go with our sister right there we need to take your information um, your name your phone number so we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision can you just go with them quickly quickly just go with them church can we celebrate them as they go let's celebrate them as they go Come on, church, you are not rejoicing like the angels. Let's celebrate them as they go. Come on. Keep clapping. Look at this multitude of souls. My God, look at this multitude. Don't get tired of clapping. Come on. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just a final word before I return back to my seat. Apostle Felix, thank you. I'm holding your hands before your people so that they know that I love you and I appreciate this moment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My final session is tomorrow but I want to beseech everyone that you'll be part of this conference until the last day yes are we together do this to honor Jesus and to honor the labor that has gone in over this conference hallelujah but I need to tell you South Africa thank you for receiving that which God has placed in our lives thank you for the honor thank you for the love the labor all that you have done hallelujah it's an honor and a privilege to serve you and to serve Jesus. I have received all kinds of honor right from my arrival at the airport up until now. And I do not take your love for me for granted. And so, Apostle Felix, thank you. South Africa, thank you. May the Lord bless you. Can we celebrate the man of God? Come on. Celebrate the servant of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle Joshua Selman, for 
taking time to be here. We are really grateful. And every time we beckon on you, you never say no. He never, ever says no. He's always going to be here. Amen. This is his home in South Africa. Very soon, I'm planning that by the privilege of God's prosperity and blessing on my life, I'll buy him a house in South Africa.